made some ribs last night that everyone said were the last ribs we ever needed to make. They want them like that all the time, and we think you will too. Here's the thing. I cook them the way I often cook them, in the oven, uh, approximately an hour. Then I normally finish them on the grill, or under the broiler if it's inclement weather. Last night, we finished them off in the deep fryer behind me. And when I tell you they were spectacular, Max, how were they? Epic. He just swore that we need to cut out because it's too early in the video, but they were blanking epic. They were so good. They had the little crunch. Oh, it's great. It's great. It's great. So you're going to do it. Here's the plan. We make our little seasoning. We prep the ribs. We get them in the oven. We make our sauce for them after. Then we wait. Then they come out. We cut them. We fry them. We sauce them. We eat them. And then Chance, who's in love with ribs and wearing his rib shirt today. He had no idea we're making ribs. He's going to pee himself just a little bit because they're going to be that great. All right, we start with the rub first. All right, you've seen me make this before, so pay attention if you don't remember the recipes below. We begin with three tablespoons of brown sugar, which look like, I think that, no, I think that. We follow it up with three tablespoons of chipotle chili powder, two tablespoons of ground cumin, the same of smoked paprika, the same of garlic powder, the same of kosher salt, and a tablespoon of ground black pepper. And all that we will mix. And when you're all mixed up, we'll set this aside and use it in a couple minutes. Now the ribs. Okay, so clearly, this is the, the top side, right? The questionable part is back here is this membrane. Do you take it off? Do you not take it off? I'm going to show you how to take it off. So get yourself a little knife. Come down here. I like to start at the skinny end to a bone. And you want to just put this underneath and raise this part up. Now grabbing this, you can see it's really slippery. It's never going to work. So get a piece of paper towel and grab like that and then pull. What you're trying to do is just pull this off in one piece and Yes, successful. Throw that away, do the other side. Okay, so at this point, let's just look at them. How's our fat? Do we have to worry about extra fat on here? We're okay. Do I care about this? Well, a tiny little bit of fat is never gonna kill anybody. And it's pork, it's gonna help. You got that done, and now we want our rub to stick, and we're gonna use a binder on the outside. You could use mayo, you could use mustard. I'm using Cholula because it'll give it a little extra bit of heat. Not a lot, we're not drowning, we're not inundating, as Max likes to say. You are the inundator. We are just doing this. And when you've got sort of a nice even layer, we'll come back with our seasoning, and we add. We're gonna add more of this at another point, so you don't have to worry about being too aggressive, because more Will show up. All right, flip them over and repeat. You don't have to do this, but my move is to lift these guys up, put them on a baking rack on this baking sheet. I like to get them off the deck. I feel like they cook better. I don't want them sitting in liquid, and the liquid could be the fat that comes off of these and or this apple cider vinegar that I'm gonna pour in, just about a quarter to a third of a cup. What that's gonna do, that's gonna create some moisture and help these steam and get super tender. And now we'll wrap them in foil. You want this nice and tight. What happened here? Look at that. Hold up some fingers. How many do I have? Five. And you know why? Because you shot this with your stupid fly thing. Look at it. Oops. I had a perfect piece of tin foil here. And look what you went and did. This is like we're getting more into Yes. It. I'm not going. You get it. Juvenile. I only need the long one. It should be on the counter. Look, Max, a beautiful piece of foil. Not with buckshot holes in it. Perfect. Okay, the ribs have been demembraned. They've been chalulid. They've been seasoned. They've been put on a rack. Vinegar's been added, and they've been wrapped tightly with foil. These will now go into a 350 degree oven for one hour. And in that time, well, they'll get amazing. I'll come back, we'll make the sauce for it, and then we just wait for them to finish. Our sauce begins very simply with one cup of your favorite barbecue sauce, store-bought. You don't have to go fancy at this point either. We're gonna add to that about a quarter cup of light brown sugar, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, one, two, and three tablespoons of pomegranate molasses. Listen, we had this last night and I've had this pomegranate molasses in my pantry forever and it is amazing. It adds a gorgeous sourness to the whole thing. This we will mix. Yeah. All right, nothing to do until those ribs come out. And here they are. So they've cooked in the oven for an hour. I took them out. I took the foil off. I poured off all of the liquid that was in the bottom and I've just let them cool. Now you can deal with them because when they're boiling hot, you can't deal with them and we need to deal with them now. So I'm gonna show you one rack like this. Put this away. Next move is to cut them into individual ribs. You can see bone, bone, so just in between. 
like that, all the way through. And by the way, I have them turned over on their back because it's easier to see. It's harder on the convex side. The concave side, we all remember from school, gives you lines to follow. Sometimes it's tricky where the bone actually goes through. Okay. Watch this. Set these off to the side for a second. Get yourself a big baking sheet and we'll put some cornstarch on it. Now there's a little wind and we know how light cornstarch is, so I hope it doesn't f with me too much. Yes, you could use flour for those of you asking that. To our cornstarch, we're gonna add a little bit of that seasoning we made. Might as well use it because it's only gonna make everything better. Mix. All right, so now we'll take our ribs. These are beautiful. And give them a light dusting in here. Knock off the excess. You don't need to worry about the backside too much. And then I'll just put them on this baking sheet beside me until they're all done. Light coating. And last one. All right, you know what we do now? We go to the fryer. And in we go. We're gonna give them two minutes. But I don't think I'll put everyone in because I do not want to overcrowd. So I'll just maybe do, I don't know, 10 or so. There you go. Now let them sit for maybe 20, 30 seconds before you start to jostle them around. Let them build up a little bit of crust. And when it has, you can do this and see what's going on. That's going on. Oh man. We're all gonna be happy, boys. We're all gonna be happy. And when they look like that, after two minutes, take them out. It's important to remember how many you put in because you can't really see. But if there's bubbling, you know there's something there. And one left over here. There we go. All right, I'll throw the last ones in. And when you see me next, we'll be saucing. And here's what I want to do. Oh, I just want to set them up right like this. See, what's good is the texture of them. It's not like ribs you've had, unless you've had these. Can I get one more in here? Sorry for my analness. No, you stand up. There we go. Okay, now remember the sauce. So we'll just apply a little sauce right down the center of each one. Goodness gracious. I can smell that pomegranate molasses coming through. When I lived in Canada, we'd go to a Chinese restaurant and have dry garlic spare ribs. And this is the first time I'm starting to think that this was part of the process. They were dry like these are. They were crispy like these are. They were so delicious. Clearly a different flavor profile, but I think the process is essentially the same. Wow, be still my freaking heart, that is so beautiful. And they're pretty as a picture. Well, let's find one to eat, this one, that fat kid. This beautiful, gorgeous fried rib. The texture is so good. Clean off the bone. Mm. They're so interesting, and I don't mean interesting like, you know, your friend's trying to hook you up with an unattractive person, and they give them the whole, oh, what do they look like? Oh, there's interesting, you know. I mean, interesting in the, the texture, and you can see that it's dry, but it's dry on the outside, but it's moist inside, it's tender inside, it's so good. It's so good, it's so fun. Yes, you don't need a deep fry, you could shallow fry them. A couple inches of oil and uh, send the cooking guy a cast iron pan, you'll be fine. Okay, you could use somebody else's cast iron pan. I don't think they'll be as fine, but you gotta do this. Mm. All right, I gotta end this so the boys can eat. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hit the subscribe button, give us a like and a comment. What would you like us to make you? Huh? Huh? See ya.